Hey folks, Jamie here. Thank you for tuning in. Before we get started, I would like for you to take a moment and go down below and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Maybe leave a comment. If you're really feeling generous, maybe share this video to your social media feeds. What that does is make it a lot easier for other people to find a moment of Tiki. I really appreciate it and it helps out a lot. Thanks. Now, on with the show. Welcome to another episode of A Moment of Tiki coming to you from the Lagoon of Mystery, my home tiki bar here in Central Texas. A few episodes ago, I admitted that one of my big failings in my tiki bar construction is a lack of attention to lighting and that I needed to remedy that. I initially uh, started to address it by converting that rattan table lamp into a hanging swag lamp. Uh, today I want to take on a little bit more of a challenge as far as tiki lighting goes. A number of years ago I lucked into uh, acquiring this tapa cloth at an estate sale and it was not stored very well. It was uh, really ragged. It was a much larger sheet at the time. Uh, I understand that this is Samoan Siapo, S-I-A-P-O cloth, that the uh, dark pigments are tannic and they get darker as it ages and it can also be reversed with really cool patterns on this side as well. And it, this cloth wasn't in good enough shape to display on its own. There's a lot of creases, tears, uh, it's brittle, it hasn't been taken care of very well. But I still wanted to use it because it's obviously very old. So I'm going to attempt to make, turn it into a lamp, a hanging lamp for my tiki room. There is a nice uh, drum tapa lamp hanging in Lalo, the great tiki bar over in Houston. And on our multiple occasions visiting there, I've sat there and I've admired that lamp. So I am going to attempt to use this tapa cloth, this Moen tapa cloth, to create a similar style lamp. And y'all are invited along for the ride. So let's go and see how this turns out. The form of the tapa lamp that I'm going to make, I've decided will be a barrel shape or drum shape. What I have here are two embroidery hoops. If you look, I've glued the concentric circles together and removed the screws that help tighten and loosen it. On one side, I've marked six equidistant indicators. And this is where the support struts will be glued. Now, there are six slats. I'm going to put six on here uh, to hold the pieces equidistant from each other. I'm using Type Bond 2 wood glue, which is a strong, solid glue. Place. A little bit right here. And some on the hoop, on the mark, and attach the two pieces together. Now you're going to have some squeeze out with the glue, but don't worry, we can clean that up. I'm going to attach the two pieces so it will be held in place firmly until it dries. And when you're doing any type of uh, home improvement woodworking, stuff of that nature, you will quickly learn that there is no such thing as too many clamps. And there you have it, the frame up of the future Papa light. 
<laughs> because the tapa is structurally unsound, it's old, it's frail, it's fragmented and tearing, I'm going to mount it onto interfacing prior to mounting the entire setup onto the photo frame. Now to cut the interfacing to the proper size, I have taped it to the frame and from here I'm rolling the frame along the length of the interfacing so I can get the proper dimensions. With the interfacing rolled onto the frame, take a pencil and I mark the insides so we can establish where the cut goes. Now I'm positioning the tapa claw over the interface and this is where things get tricky. The very edges aren't going to be exposed in the final product so I don't have to go all the way to the edge but the middle parts are in some sections like right here the tapa is exceptionally damaged and it is up to me to try and figure out how I'm going to deal with this. Um, I have another section right here that is fairly intact and solid so I am going to try and cut this damaged piece away and replace it with the more solid piece which is very stressful because this tapa is old and fragile and I'm looking at it as a type of cultural artifact so I do not want to increase the damage okay so I have the tapa laid down in position over the um, interface. I have a damp cloth going over that. I've got little repairs made and we're going to start applying heat to fuse the tapa onto the interfacing. Okay, friends, <clears throat> you know how I like to say I make mistakes so you don't have to? Well, here is a significant one. The interfacing did not uh, interface properly. In some places, it's uh, stuck pretty tight to the top of cloth. Other places, it is uh, coming loose. Because the tapa is so old, and fragile, I can't risk pulling it up because some of the places it's adhered to fairly strong. And at the same time, I just can't let it flap loosely. So what I'm going to do is use some of the Gorilla Glue spray adhesive. This is probably what I should have gone with to begin with, but I thought, you know, the heat activated interfacing would work better because I did want something backing this. Um, I should have just taken the interfacing and sprayed glue on it to begin with. That's all I can say about that. So what I'm going to do here is peel this back as far as I can, spray the glue in here, and then set it down and hope that this time uh, everything works out right. It's really windy today, so that might affect the audio, so apologies in advance. With the glue fully dried on here, we can remove the clamps and progress to the next phase in this mad endeavor. The frame is solid. Now I'm going to take hardware cloth. I have no idea why they call this hardware cloth. It's not cloth, it is galvanized steel wire, uh, they're crisscross, cross-hatched in uh, quarter inch squares. I'm going to cut this. Hello, Miss Bell. Bell says hi. I'm going to space this out 
so it will form a frame for the tapa cloth to attach to. So cutting right here, and we will cut all the way down. Yes, I'm happy to report in this situation, tin snips do work much, much better for trimming the hardware cloth for length. Put this away and save it for future projects. And let's roll. Position it. See how close we got back to it. Oh, that's very good. Now I'm going to take this wire, which had tied the hardware cloth together, and I'm going to start tying the hardware cloth onto the frame. On the top, I'm going to cut out a two and a half inch circle through this hardware claw so that the light, a standard size light bulb, can fit so it'll be illuminated within. Now we have a hole for the light to go in. Yay! Now that the glue has dried on the Tapa Fusion combo, and I have the cage finished, on the frame, uh, now comes the super glamorous part where I get to take this high-tech combination of needle and black thread and actually stitch all of the tapa fabric um, lamp cover onto the frame. And there's no real right way or wrong way to do it. Just make sure you have it lined up properly and go to town. I'm using a black nylon thread because it will not be terribly visible when I'm finished. Now we have to cut out the end pieces to seal off the drum light. Uh, again, I'm turning to interfacing. I'm not going to bother with trying to heat activate it. I'm just using it as backing for the tapa. So I'm positioning this on here and with just a plain pencil, I'm drawing the outline. Once I have that in place, I'm going to need a little extra to fold over the ends so I can glue it in place. So I'm just roughly sketching out three quarters of an inch around the side. Doesn't have to be exact. Just enough so we can lay it flat and then fold it over the edge. And that's where I will glue it or pin it or whatever in place. I'm not entirely sure yet. We'll burn that bridge when we come to it. Now we cut out the pattern that we have drawn on the interfacing. This is remnants of the tapa cloth that I've been working with. It's pretty ratty as you can see. Uh, this section is 
pretty solid, so this is what I'm going to cut out to attach. So going back to the trusty cardboard. Laying the interfacing down. Once again, I have this spray adhesive. Nice, solid coat. Don't drop it. Instructions recommend letting it sit for about a minute to become tacky. It's starting to get tacky already. So I think I will go ahead and position it on the top of cloth here. Press down, hold in place, and ideally I would have something heavy to lay on top of it to keep it flat. Something like a big heavy board. Now, the spray glue has set and we're going to cut these out. Because the tapa is old and fragile and brittle, I'm going to save the scrap pieces here so I can effect repairs if needed. Before I close up the ends, I have each of the support ribs inside that I want to mark so I know where they are on the exterior. So I have plans. So, I'm taking blue tape, cutting it in half because half is slightly smaller than the width of these uh, wooden beams in here. And I'm marking it about an inch back from the edge. This is so, once everything is sealed up, I will be able to know where the bars are going across. This will be important later, I promise. With all the cross support beams inside marked, <clears throat> it's time to attach the ends. What I am going to do is take this uh, Loctite vinyl fabric and plastic glue, which I used previously to uh, patch up some of the tears and holes in the tapa, and the little squares along the side that I sliced, I'm going to put a little bit on each one. Doesn't need to be a whole lot, but you know, enough to adhere. I'm going to do the whole thing all the way around. And I really hope this works because I'm just, again, making it up as I go along. Okay. <clears throat> now, position this right here. The light over the top. Getting it all centered. And now I fold these pieces up. What I'm going to try and do, what I hope to do, is use this blue tape to time and place. Might work better. I'm not sure. Okay, so what I'm doing is using just regular stick pins for sewing and pinning down the edges of the tapa so it doesn't pop up. And it seems to be working fairly well for the moment.
Once the end caps are glued firmly into place, I am going to wrap the ends with backpack braid to uh, cover up and refine that edge. Uh, backpack is the woven fibers of banana plants. I'm taking the fabric glue, which I used earlier to glue the top of cloth into position, and I'm spreading it liberally on the backpack braid. Once I have it fully coated, I'm wrapping the backpack braid around the circumference of the end of each end of the drum. And I am pinning it into place with uh, needles, just as I did earlier with the top of cloth. And we'll let it sit here till it dries and that will give a nice uh, refined look to the ends of this uh, top of barrel. Oh, I measured and I cut three bamboo sections at 17 inches each, which is an inch longer than the top of light itself. Now I'm going to split them down the middle to create six segments. With the bamboo split into equal halves, I'm taking the torch and roasting the ends that are going to protrude from the ends of the lamp. Therefore, they're darker and don't stand out quite so much. Now it's time to attach the bamboo pieces onto the lamp itself. Using the blue tape that I put here previously to line up bamboo pieces and extending them one inch off either side just eyeballing it it's not that important and now I'm going to drill into a pilot hole pilot holes are important because bamboo will split now I am going to drill into this going slow because I don't want to crack the bamboo. Perfect. Now we repeat the process on the other side. Now comes time for some of the touch-up parts. The details that hide the imperfections. The screws, for example, very antique. So I'm taking ordinary jute twine and using this paint stir stick to slide it underneath the bamboo so I can pull it straight. I want it to be even on both sides. Yes. Pull it tight and now we are going to cross over and we're going to lash back and forth. Until the screw is covered and we will tie it off. Now all the external aesthetic structure of the lamp is in place, but it doesn't do much good unless it actually illuminates. As I'm trying to build this with as little financial investment as possible, I'm using what I have on hand. I have some of these uh, uh, sockets right here that I got a while back for a different project. And I want to use one of these flicker bulbs, uh, LED flame light flicker bulbs in here. So I have cut a hole in it that's just right, yet I have no way of mounting it. So, had to come up with some way to attach it to the top so the strain wouldn't be put on the wires to hold it in there. 
What I came up with after much trial and error is probably something that will uh, send experienced lamp makers screaming for the hills, but you know, trial and error on my part, and this is what I came up with. I took a piece of bamboo that I had, a larger piece, and carved it out with these uh, slat hooks to go on the side. And what I can do is slide it underneath each of these bamboo crossbars. Maybe if it cooperates. See? And there it holds in place. Now the question becomes, how do I attach that? How do I attach this to this? Well, the answer is another bamboo piece. This bamboo piece connects here, and this, uh, the, the socket, fits right in here. Now I'm going to secure them in place using epoxy. Epoxy here, and epoxy here. I've drilled a small hole through the center of this bamboo support for the main lamp cord. And in this downward piece, I've drilled four holes for each of these respective lamp wires. And if you're thinking this looks really weird, it is because, again, found materials I have on hand and not any real additional expense. And these wires go through these holes. And ultimately, I am connecting the neutral and the neutral and the hot and the hot. So I'm going to attach the socket to the bamboo and the bamboo to the cross piece and secure it using epoxy. Now this is going to take a generous amount about five minutes this is fairly fast setting stuff so I want to get equal amounts of the epoxy and the hardener keep the ratio right and then stir mix them all thoroughly until you get an even gray this all inside. And friction from the socket should do a pretty good job of uh, ensuring that it stays put. Now, we're going to put some of the remainder the epoxy along the top of this where it's going to come in contact with the bamboo cross piece. And there are probably better ways to do this and for those of you out there shaking their heads and pulling their hair out, let me know how I should have done this because I just kind of make it up as I go along and my instincts aren't always the best. I think it's starting to stiffen up just a little bit. So, that means I will need to make 
sure this gets pushed together quickly. Now it's time to connect all the wires together so the light has power. Uh, first, I'm going to get some heat shrink tubing. This is available at any type of hardware store, big box store. I'm going to slide it over the wire first. Got to do this first. And you're going to take the two neutral wires. You can tell a neutral wire if you have black wire that's uh, two lines. The neutral wire is going to have ridges on the side, so you can feel those with your fingers right there. So that denotes the neutral wire. So slide your tubing over the wire, and we're going to connect these using a lineman splice. Going to crisscross the two wires at midpoint, and you're going to take the first one, fold it over. Then loop once, twice, and three times. Then do the same thing with the other one. Loop once, twice, and three times. This forms a very stable splice. You can solder it if you want. This is not going to be a, a stressed joint, so I am going to forego the soldering step, but we are going to continue here and move the heat shrink tubing over the splice. I'm going to take a heat gun and use it to shrink wrap the shrink tubing over our splice. There you go. A nice, tightly sealed splice. To hang the lamp, I am going to use braided seagrass cord. And if you want to go simple, all you have to do is tie a knot and loop it around for these corners of the bamboo that's sticking out. Very simple. Um, I want to put little eye holes, eyelets, eye screws right here in the four corners because I never met a job I didn't like to complicate. So I'm using a drill to drill pilot holes. Simple, simple pilot holes. Now with the pilot holes drilled, we're gonna take the screws and screw them in, which is kind of self-explanatory, but There, I have eye screws in all four corners. Now I'm going to take a section of seagrass board. And just tie it in here. There we have it, the finished lamp. This took an incredibly long amount of time, much longer than you spent watching here on video, but it's finished and I think it looks fantastic and I cannot wait to go hang it in my indoor tiki space. And here we are. We are in my interior tiki space, which is still in the process of being converted to full on tiki. But the tapa lamp is in place on the roof. 
I think it looks gorgeous with the flame light. It has that really cool flicker effect going. And by being inside, this old Samoan tapa cloth will be preserved for you know, the indefinite future. I uh, made a lot of mistakes with this, uh, learned going along. If I make another one, it'll go much quicker because I know how to cut to the chase. And I hope you have been able to learn from my mistakes as well. And if you take on a project like this, then you will share your results with me because I'd like to see what you would come up with because I'm really, really happy with the way this turned out and can't wait to move on to my next lamp project. So. Until next time, from Lagoon of Mystery, aloha. Okay, so what I'm doing at the moment is taking pins and just pinning them down. Glue is dried already. <laughs>